Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we showed you that neutron degeneracy was part at play in stopping the collapse of that core of that supermassive star. But we also realized it wasn't enough. It could only account for a total mass of 0.7 times the mass of the Sun, and we know that the mass of a neutron star is bigger than that. So there's another force that helps stop that collapse, and that force is the nuclear strong force. And yes, that word strong does mean something there. It's the strongest force known in nature. Although, the electrostatic forces are not that far behind. For example, when we talk about two nucleons when they're protons, we have a situation like this. When you try to bring two protons closer together, the, nucle the uh, repulsive forces caused by the Coulomb forces, the repulsive forces between like charges, push back very, very strongly. So it's very difficult to bring two protons close together. So what has to happen is, for us to be able to bring them together, you have to bring them close enough. Once you bring the two protons close enough, even though the Coulomb forces keep getting bigger and bigger as they get closer and closer and closer, at some point, very suddenly, because the nuclear strong forces only act at very, very short distances, when you bring the two protons close enough, the, nuclear, the strong force all of a sudden gets strong enough to overpower the repulsive forces, the Coulomb forces between the two protons, and then the, the strong forces are then able to keep the two protons together. That's part of the nuclear fusion process that happens inside the core of the Sun. If we're dealing with two neutrons, we don't have any repulsive forces because they don't have any charges. And so therefore, the nuclear strong force becomes very powerful when they get very close. Then you say, well, wait a minute. Didn't you just tell me that the nuclear strong force is, re is responsible for stopping the collapse, but doesn't the nuclear strong force pull them closer together? Well, yes, up to a certain point. But then, if we take a look at this chart, this explains things even better. Because this curve right here is a curve representing the potential energy between two nucleons when they come close together. Notice that the lower the potential energy, the more likely they are to come together. Potential energy, of course, is like when you take an object and you push it higher up uh, away from the Earth, then you lower the potential energy. A, an object will, when you bring it closer to the Earth, increases the potential energy. So objects want to be where the potential energy is the lowest, and so things tend to fall towards the Earth. Well, ob objects such as nucleons, protons and neutrons want to be at the lowest point possible. That's where the attractive forces, the, nucle or the nuclear strong force, are the largest. So these are the, this is where the attractive force is the greatest of the nuclear strong force. So what happens is, it gets to this point, then when you bring them even close together, the nuclear strong force forces aren't quite as strong. They get weaker and weaker and weaker, and when you get to a certain point, they begin to repel. So the nuclear strong force does both attract and repel as the objects get too close together. Where they are the strongest is at about 0.8 femtometer. Now a femtometer is 10 to the minus 15 meter. So when we have a femtometer, when they're a part of a radius of 0.8 femtometers, so that's typically the distance between nucleons in the nucleus of an atom. And so that's also pretty well where the two objects, such as two neutrons, or a neutron and a proton, or two protons, are more likely to be, where the radius of each is about 0.8 femtometer for a total distance between them, from nucleus to nucleus, of about 1.6 femtometers, or 1.6 times 10 to the minus 5 meters. So then when you try to push them closer together, the attractive forces become weaker and weaker and weaker, and eventually, instead of attractive forces, they become repulsive forces, and it's that part where the nuclear strong force comes in. So as the two objects get closer and closer together, or in the case of the, the, the core of a massive, supermassive uh, star, as the core collapses and all the neutrons and protons are smashed together, eventually when they get too close, they begin to repel. repel. Now, for two reasons. One reason is the protons already experience tremendous electrostatic repulsive forces. And so when the nuclear strong force becomes weaker, when two protons get very close together, then the repulsive forces will 
outperform the nuclear strong force which gets weaker as the distance gets too close and secondly when two neutrons are smashed together too close and they reach distance such that the total distance between is 1.1 femtometers then the neutrons will get repelled as well by the nuclear strong force and that is the force that prevents the core of that supermassive star to collapse any further and that's where the bounce back comes from the initial bounce back and then the neutron star settles in at a radius or a dis or I should say diameter of about 20 kilometers or about 12 miles so that is the combination first of all we have the neutron degeneracy force and secondly we have the nuclear strong force once you try to push the neutrons too close together that pushes back as well and that's what keeps the star from collapsing or the core of the star from collapsing any further now when the mass exceeds about three times the mass of the sun these forces cannot withstand the enormous pressure created by the collapse of the core and it will go beyond it being a neutron star it'll then turn into a black hole but of course that's a whole other series coming up on videos later on but so this is the ultimate limit the limit we believe is about 2.5 times the mass of the sun if the neutron star doesn't have the core of the neutron star doesn't have enough mass to overpower this nuclear strong force well, then it'll start, it'll bounce back and become a neutron star about 20 kilometers across. And that's the reason why the nuclear strong force halts the collapse as well as being held by the neutron degeneracy. And that's why it happens. Where does the strong force come from to push the protons together or the neutrons? If you figure that one out, you get a Nobel Prize for sure. <laughs> It's one, of those, it's one of the four fundamental forces that exists. We can measure it. What causes it? It's just, it's hard to know. So it's just out there? You know, I think it has something to do with the forces between the quarks. And I think the forces reach out beyond the boundary of the nucleon. But that's why the, the forces are so... Well, they don't go out very far, so the forces drop out very quickly. So I do believe it has something to do, this is just me speaking, some do with the quarks, the forces that the quarks experience that go across boundaries. So when you put nucleons close together, the forces of the, of the quarks begin to interact. And when you bring them too close together, then of course you violate the, the, uh, the, the same quantum number in the same space. And you also violate the, the repulsive forces between the quarks that begin to act on one another. So I think that's what it is. But again, once you figure it out, there's a Nobel Prize waiting for you at the end of the, end of the hallway. <laughs> I want to say something, but I shouldn't say it. No. Not on video. Not on video. <laughs>